Alright, so today I was watching some gameplay footage from Rise, Son of Rome, which reminded me once again of one of my personal pet peeves, namely the use of shields as it's commonly portrayed in video games. You see that in movies as well, but really video games all the time. And um, so this video is going to be addressed primarily to video game designers, or more specifically animators really, but hopefully other people will find it uh, informative and entertaining as well. Uh, if you have practiced historical martial arts, you already know about this, so it's not really going to be very interesting. So how do they normally do it? And uh, by the way, yes, I am aware that this is a very anachronistic combination of uh, this type of sword with that shield. A medieval arming sword would not have been used with a Viking style shield, but who cares? It's just for demonstration. So the way video game characters normally use a shield, or rather don't, is when they throw a cut, they kind of do it like this. You know, opening the shield up, bringing it away, and then kind of, in some cases, they pretty much move it as far back as they can, which is very odd. I mean, it doesn't take a, an experienced master swordsman to realize that the main purpose of the shield is to protect yourself. So if you just bring it completely <laughs> behind you where it doesn't really do anything. And what's the point? Why are you even carrying that thing if, if you basically move as if you didn't have it? Uh, it's not like they're responding to a threat from behind and then doing something like this. No, they're really focused on the target in front of them and whee, there we go. Um, yeah, that's a little strange. I don't even see the purpose for just animation because when doing that, you're actually making it harder on yourself because then you have to animate the entire movement like this with the, with the second arm. You actually have more to animate. Whereas if you were to do it the way they're supposed to, you know, still keeping the shield in front, keeping themselves protected, then you don't even have to animate as much. Yeah, sure, you have to make sure that uh, the sword and shield don't clip, but otherwise it's actually a lot less movement. And if I do it like this, I'm a lot less exposed. I mean, yeah, sure, when I'm attacking, I open up this line of attack. You always open up some lines. It's impossible to protect all of the body at once. But you can still react to it. If I end up here and someone throws a cut at this side, well, I can always just move it around. And then pair it like this. And if their weapon is on my right side, then I have the opening right here. Occasionally you at least see something like this, where they hold the shield in front of them and then thrust out to the side, which is a lot better, although it still exposes your arm. You know, if your opponent evades or parries that thrust, then your arm is right there for the taking, basically. Whereas if you do it like this, you're just more covered. There are various ways in which you could animate the attack which would look a lot more effective. Like, uh, for example, you could actually have them cut to the side of the shield as long as they don't you know, stretch out like that, they're not exposing themselves too much. I mean, you see that my arm is still basically behind the shield and if someone were to try to snipe at my arm, I can you know, still, just with a slight turn, I can adjust so it's not that big of a deal from the front, you know, if you just attack like that, basically, it's, yeah, it may not look quite as powerful, because normally they go for this huge, whoa, this massive wind-up, and yeah, you wouldn't really want to do that in a fight anyway. If you want to make it look more spectacular, powerful, or whatever, you could have them wind up the cut like this, you know, from the wrist which um, exposes them a lot more, but at least it's far better than... Whoa! <laughs> and I understand that in a video game generally the movements have to be a bit more static unless you go for the more uh, Arkham Asylum style fighting where you have very fluid movements from one enemy to the other and from one attack to the other. But uh, generally it's, it's of course a lot easier to have a bit more of a, a static position. So they're just basically holding the shield up like that and then at the same time you can still make them look a lot more competent if you just do something 
like this. Or if you want to make it look more fancy, you can make him turn the wrist like that. So yeah, this is just my personal view on how to make fighters in games look a bit more like they have a clue of what they're doing. <laughs> so, thanks for watching.